Hi guys, it's Ksenia. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the perfume range of the House of Juliet Has a Gun. I have nine perfumes that I'm going to be reviewing in this video today. These are like the nine I feel like most popular from this house. I am obviously missing a couple other ones, but I think this is like their core collection and I feel like a lot of you are probably familiar with some of these. This video is going to be really interesting. There's a ton of really interesting fun facts, cool facts, weird facts in this video. So I think for all of you perfume lovers, like me out there. I think this video is going to be really interesting to you. This is definitely a very innovative house and I think you're gonna see that as we get into all of these perfumes. So a little bit of information behind the history of this brand. Julia Hesagan was actually founded in 2006 by Romano Ricci and if that last name sounds a little familiar to you it's because he's actually the great-grandson of Nina Ricci which is obviously like a famous designer. She's also really well known for her perfumes. I'm sure a lot of you are really familiar with a lot of her perfumes because you always let me know in the comments for me to try them out and I'm actually really interested on getting my hands on a couple of them so once I do I will definitely make a review on those but yeah her great-grandson is the nose behind Juliet has a gun but he has actually partnered with Francis Curtijan which may also sound a little familiar to you because he is probably like the most well-known I feel like a perfumer and he is the perfumer behind Baccarat Rouge 540. I swear I talk about this perfume in like every single one of my videos So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with him if you watch literally any perfume video ever But he has also partnered with names like Jean-Paul Gaultier and Ellie Saab, which we are all familiar with all of their perfumes So this brand has some really good noses behind it to say the least. This brand is considered a niche brand They use very high quality Ingredients in their perfumes and everything about them just kind of screams niche. They're very welcome composed complex perfumes but that come in a very affordable price which is amazing because usually with niche perfumes the price point can range from like 300 to 500 dollars and in this brand i feel like the most expensive that their perfumes get is like 135 which i feel like is like the average price for most perfumes like most designers anyway and this is a niche brand and it's not too far off from that price point by the way this video is not sponsored i feel like the way that i'm talking about in this video and all the information that i'm giving it kind of may like come across as if it is sponsored but we're not sponsored but if juliet has a gun does want to sponsor me though here i am in the flesh I would be more than happy to. I feel like a lot of people also don't understand the name behind this house. Like, I feel like people just see the name Juliet Has a Gun and they're like super confused. Like, what is this? Like, what? Like, what is that name? But it actually has a really cool meaning behind it. Juliet Has a Gun is basically like an analogy for fragrance being used as a weapon of like seduction because, you know, Romeo and Juliet, that's, that's where the name comes from. So you get it now. So yeah, the name actually has meaning behind it. It's not just some random person named Juliet and she has a gun and you're just like, okay, but like, why does she have a gun? Like, what is this? There's actually a meaning behind it. The way that I'm going to be reviewing these perfumes is I actually have a little discovery set. I actually bought this at Sephora. Discovery sets are amazing to discover some of your favorite perfumes without having to actually commit to the full size. You can really get to know all of them, wear them, see how you like them, see how they develop on you through time and then decide which one you would want to actually go and pay full price for. So that's how I'm going to be reviewing all of these. There's actually eight perfumes in this particular set, but as I said, I am reviewing nine perfumes today. And that's because the ninth perfume is not included in this set, but I did smell it in store. I'm pretty familiar with how it smells, enough for me to kind of give you a review on that one as well. So this one comes with like seven little samples and then you get a bigger sample and spoiler alert i have actually already bought the full size of one of these perfumes which i'm going to show you which one it is but another spoiler alert i love two of the perfumes like so much in this range that i'm considering heavily getting the full sizes of those ones there's actually more than two that i'm really in love with from this house so maybe i'll ask for them for christmas or something before we get into this video please make sure that you are subscribed and that you hit the notification button but with all that being said let's actually get into these perfumes so let's get started with the star of the show their best seller basically the fragrance that started it all i feel like this is what they are most known for because this perfume is so innovative so cool but yet so simple it is a perfume that literally only has one note so this perfume is juliet has a gun not a perfume and that's because 
technically it's not a perfume it only has one note as we all know perfumes are usually composed in a way where you have top and middle and base notes and this one only has one singular note and that note is Cetalox, otherwise known as Ambroxan, which is kind of like the more familiar name for it and a lot of you guys may be familiar with Ambroxan, and i was too that's because it's used in a lot of perfumes it's typically in the base notes sometimes in the middle notes of a lot of perfumes but usually you'll see it composed with like a million other notes whereas in this one it's literally the only ingredient in here so you're probably thinking like well, well like what does that smell like once i started kind of researching it and knowing like getting to know this note like all the history behind it it is literally so interesting so i'm gonna let you guys know a little history lesson from xenia today so ambroxan was actually first used in 1950 and it was kind of supposed to be a substitute for gray ambergris which is a very costly ingredient so obviously it would have cost a lot of money to make any singular perfume so they needed to come up with something that would be a lot more cost effective to be produced in mass and basically ambroxan just ended up being like a synthetic replacement or substitute to actual ambergris which is literally translated as gray amber and it's called gray amber because it literally like in its raw form it literally looks like a lump of gray coal like rocks like just black rocks now once you guys hear where ambergris actually comes from your mind will be blown ambergris is a waxy substance that is produced in the digestive tract of sperm whales. But we don't stop there. It is then regurgitated by the whale and it basically just floats on top and it can also like wash up on shores. And that is basically where they get ambergris from. And literally like a 2.4 pound chunk of ambergris can literally go up to like twenty thousand dollars which is insane so clearly they were in desperate need to find a replacement for it now as you can imagine this scent of cedalox which is the synthetic version of ambergris it basically smells very earthy it smells clean which is crazy i know coming from a digestive tract of a, a whale but that's just how it is i don't know how to make the rules this ingredient is also hypoallergenic so for all of those of you that cannot wear perfumes you will not have anything to worry about with this perfume because it's very flying under the radar perfume but this perfume or this note i guess pretty much acts like an aphrodisiac in a way it's kind of known that it brings out your natural muskiness but in a good way because that kind of sounds gross it's basically like a skin scent which also kind of sounds gross it basically brings out like your natural pheromones it's supposed to be like very attracting to the people around you and although when you spray this perfume at first you're gonna be like this smells like nothing a lot of people have found this scent to like when they first spray it They'll get like really discouraged and disappointed because they'll be like, um, this is crap. Like I'm gonna throw this in the trash because it smells like nothing. Do not be so quick to do that because it even says actually like in the back of this box, it's made of a single ingredient called Cetalox that reacts with your own skin and makes the scent unique on everyone. And basically the secret ingredient is you because you are going to make this fragrance either smell really good or really bad. Some people say this smells really sweet some people say this smells smoky like oud and there's some people that even say that it literally smells like sweat on them some people say it smells really clean really fresh and amazing on me that's really what i find with this fragrance it really smells clean but in the best way possible in the most unique way possible some people have said that this is similar to light blue from dolce and gabbana i would have to highly disagree at least from the way that it smells on me i don't see any resemblance to that perfume a perfume that i do see a resemblance to though is nomad chloe nomad i think it actually kind of smells similar to that perfume weirdly enough but it's really weird because it actually smells different on you even on you it'll smell different every day like some days you'll wear it and it'll be a little sweeter some days you'll wear it it'll kind of be a little smokier it's basically just an ingredient that reacts to your skin so it's really hard for me to go about explaining this scent because how it smells on me is not how it will smell on you most likely but in my opinion and on my skin this smells very clean like i said resembles chloe nomad a lot which is 
one of my all-time favorite scents in the world. I love it. It's such a beautiful, sexy perfume and it's a very aphrodisiac-like scent. A lot of people that say that they cannot smell it on themselves, they say that literally this is like the most complimented perfume ever because although they will not smell it on themselves like at all, even when they first smell it, they'll go out and they'll get like a million compliments from people and people will be like, what are you wearing? Like you smell so good but you won't actually smell it yourself. It literally just brings out those pheromones that other people can smell, but you cannot. I think that's super interesting, very innovative. It's kind of like along the same lines as Molecule One. I have never smelled that, but from what I hear, that perfume is a lot more unisex than this one. This one does kind of have a unisex feel just because it's overall like, a fresher scent. This is not going to be like your projecting scent because it's so, so soft. But if anybody comes to give you a hug or you're sitting next to somebody or you're just in close proximity to anybody, they will smell this on you even if you don't. It's just an amazing scent. I highly recommend that you go and spray this on your own skin. Get a sample, get a little discovery set, see how it reacts on you. And let me know if you have this perfume, let me know how it smells on you. I personally am so in love with it that I got the full size. I got the 1.7 ounce and I got it in this little gift set, which is not a gift set, get it? But it comes with the actual perfume and a little travel spray. And this is $98, but it's like a 128 value, which I thought was a really amazing deal considering this is a niche fragrance. As far as lasting power for not a perfume, I feel like a lot of people complain that because it's so light, it doesn't really last. I actually found that it did last on me. It's light. Like it's not going to be a projecting super strong perfume that you're always going to smell on you throughout the day. But I feel like on me, I had sprayed it on my hands and it stayed on me the entire day. Although it wasn't like wafting to me, like I had to actually like smell my hand to smell it. But it was always there, like it never really left my skin. And obviously if you spray it on your clothes, it would last a lot longer. But especially on skin where perfumes normally just like evaporate, it actually stayed on me for like six plus hours. So I mean, obviously I consider that a good lasting perfume. But again, with this fragrance, it's a fragrance that you individually need to go out and spray on yourself and see how it smells and how it performs. It's such a signature worthy kind of fragrance and a fragrance that nobody else has even if they do because how it smells on you it's nothing like it's going to smell on anybody else i think that's freaking amazing so try out not a perfume right, now let's get into the next perfume so the other perfumes are actual perfumes that have top middle and base notes so the next one i have here is pear ink obviously the main note star of the show of this fragrance is pear this has top notes of pear middle notes of ambroxan and base notes of musk and ambrotolide ambretolide ambretolide i think that's how you say it so we have ambroxan again in this scent as well i feel like ambroxan is basically like their signature note it's used in a lot of their perfumes this one is so pretty that pear is so realistic in here it's not a synthetic type of pear it's so bright and fruity and fresh i actually think this smells a lot like god is a woman from ariana grande which is also like a very pear heavy perfume it smells to me so much like it it's a really simple composition of literally pear <laughs> like that's all i smell in here it almost kind of smells like apples honestly the more it dries down but I would say the main thing that's coming to mind is God is a Woman. So I guess if you want a really good dupe to this, you have God is a Woman. Literally just smells like pear. Like there's no other way to describe it. It smells like a freshly bitten, realistic pear. It's a really fresh, upbeat, happy, inoffensive fragrance. Like you could basically wear this at any time. I see this being really good for spring and summer. I don't really see this so much as like a fall or winter scent because it's so light and airy. I feel like fall and winter kind of calls for something a little bit warmer to just kind of like wrap you up. This one kind of keeps you almost cold in a way. The only thing that comes to mind every time I smell this is literally God is a Woman from Ariana Grande. So I guess that would be a great dupe to this perfume. Just pear fruity sweet type of fragrance tiny bit of musk but it's not really musky to my nose anyway would i buy a full size of this no just because it's not like wowing me it's kind of boring it's just a boring fresh fruity scent and like i said there is um god is a woman pear ink actually stays on like a good amount it stays on a lot longer than 
God is a woman. God is a woman is very not long lasting. And pairing, I would say you could probably get like a good four hours of wear. You could probably stretch it out to six, but it's about like a four hour staying power. So yeah, that is pear ink. All right, the next perfume in this set is kind of triggering to me. This is called Musk Invisible. Now I'm gonna tell you guys, I'll straight up tell you this right now. I do not like this scent. I'm like literally just giving you guys dupes of all of these, but there is a great dupe out there for this perfume. And that great dupe just happens to be one of my most hated perfumes of life. And that perfume is the Body Shop White Musk. Ah, oh, this perfume right here. If you have seen my most hated perfumes video, that's included in there. I've spoken a lot about this perfume and that and how much I hate it because I hate it a lot. This smells exactly like it. I do not like this perfume. It gives me horrible memories. It smells like sweat to me. This perfume and that perfume smell like sweat to me. It's just so musky. Way too much musk. Way, way too much musk. I feel like it's not as bad like i feel like i can actually smell this without wanting to completely throw up it's still like right here but when i smell the body shop white musk my throw up is like right here so i mean i guess we're doing better with this one but it's still like so similar to that perfume this has top notes of jasmine middle notes of cotton flower and base notes of white musk and on the julia has a gun website this is described as a fluffy scent as comfortable and unfussy as your favorite old pair of jeans as appropriate at work as on a casual date a dreamy and nostalgic smell of comfy notes laying on a silky base of creamy musk now you do with that what you will because I do not agree, but that's just because I hate that scent. So I mean, if you do like the Body Shop White Musk, then you will like it. But if you don't, then you won't. If you want a great dupe to that though, Body Shop White Musk. To be honest, I do not know the lasting power of this fragrance because I'd rather get my head chopped off than wear this for an entire day. I hated that much, so I will not be spraying that on my body to test out. But I can imagine it's probably a good long-lasting scent it's strong like for just like being an airy musky scent it's strong one that i will definitely be picking up the full size of like this will literally be like my next perfume buy i'm so in love with this fragrance literally everything about this perfume the first spray the dry down everything about it is so beautiful this is lipstick fever this perfume is so good i definitely need me a full size of this fragrance because i already know this would be one that i would literally spray on every single day summer fall spring winter i do not care like i will wear this daytime nighttime whatever the occasion actually no not whatever the occasion because this is so sexy it almost like evokes sexiness that i wouldn't wear this in like a work setting or office setting you know that kind of setting because it's like it's a raunchy like super sexy seductive scent if you love sweet scents this is going to be right up your alley this is very similar in my opinion to lolita lempica and if you watch my videos you know i'm obsessed with that perfume i think it smells so amazing the notes for this perfume are also very amazing this has top notes of raspberry violet middle notes of iris and patchouli and base notes of cedar and vanilla so really good notes i know we got a little bit of patchouli in here but to be completely honest i do not smell it at all in here i get like a licorice smell very sweet not bitter at all just really sweet and obviously the name lipstick fever this perfume is supposed to smell like lipstick and it really does this smells not necessarily like lipstick i mean there it does smell like lipstick but it smells like generally like makeup it's like a makeup smell this smells like if you go into like a dillard's or a macy's or a mac store or a sephora and like that scent of like a department store, like a makeup store is like this scent. Like it smells very high end in there and it just kind of like, I don't know, it makes you feel super girly on the inside. That's what this one smells like to me. Uh, it's a really like hard to describe type of scent, but overall it's very, 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 very sweet. This isn't going to be like a MAC lipstick type of scent. If you are familiar with MAC lipsticks, they're more like sweet, like kind of smell like cake mac lipsticks this one is not exactly that this is more of like a more powdery lipstick scent mm, i actually have maybelline lipsticks right here 
and it kind of smells like a Maybelline lipstick. It's a lot sweeter and obviously a little bit more perfumey than just a lipstick, but it smells very similar to this, and this is like a really sweet type of scent. If any of you guys have a Maybelline lipstick next to you right now, go and smell it, and it kind of smells like this perfume. Mm, no, this is a Revlon lipstick. It doesn't even have a scent. Let me try CoverGirl. Ooh, okay, yeah, we're getting close here too. CoverGirl is also very sweet and kind of like that powdery, lipsticky, makeup makeup-y smell as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's very true to the name. It smells pretty much like a lipstick, like makeup. And it's just really, really good. This literally is the sexiest perfume ever. And wearing it throughout the day, it just got better and better on my skin. It got sweeter, it got sexier, and it just always stayed on my skin. This is actually a pretty strong and projecting perfume, in my opinion. Like, it stayed on me an entire day, especially on clothes. It'll stick to your clothes. It's strong. It's out there. It's amazing. It's a little dark. It's dense. Like, it's not like an airy, fresh scent. It's definitely, definitely sweet. So, if you don't like sweet scents, maybe go and smell this first before committing to a full size. But if you are a sweet lover, I think this will be a safe blind buy. At least it is for me. And it will be a full size pickup for sure. It'll probably be like the next perfume that I. Bye. Then we have Vanilla Vibes. This perfume I'm kind of on the fence about. It's not a bad scent. It's really good, but I actually kind of find it a little bit generic. I think that there's a lot of perfumes out there that smell a lot like this. The first thing that comes to mind is Replica Beach Walk. It's like that vanilla sea salt, very much beach-like scent without like having any coconut in here it doesn't smell like sunscreen or anything it smells almost identical to beach walk in my opinion it's very beachy it literally makes you feel like you are at the beach you can literally like smell the salt in here it's super super ocean like there's top notes of salt middle notes of vanilla absolute and orchid and base notes of tonka bean sandalwood musk and benzoin this is also pretty similar to a pretty new release which was alien goddess so it's like that vanilla very beachy airy salt like scent but without having coconut in here i don't know if that makes any sense to you but it makes sense in my head at least it's kind of fresh at the same time very i feel like inoffensive and I don't think that this is a really loud projecting scent. I don't find this to be super long lasting. And honestly, to me, this is just a nice perfume. Like it doesn't smell bad. It doesn't smell like, oh my God, I need this right now. I mean, maybe if you like this type of scent profile, personally, I feel like there's a time and a place for really beachy fragrances and I prefer fragrances that I can wear on a bunch of different occasions and I feel like with this scent, you're kind of limited. Obviously, you can wear any fragrance at any time, anywhere, whatever, but I feel like that scent is so beachy smelling that it just, like, when you smell anybody that smells like that, you're like, oh my god, you just came back from the beach. So yeah, that is Vanilla Vibes. If you like fresher, salt-like, beachy fragrances, then you will really like that. Scents like Beach Walk, that's basically that. <laughs> Next up, we have Not A Perfume Superdose. As the name states, this is literally not a perfume, but just on crack. It pretty much smells exactly like Not A Perfume. But if you are one of those people that are like, oh, this is too weak for me, it's like I can barely smell it, you will smell this one. This is basically the more amped up version of Not A Perfume. It also only has one note in it and that note, just like Not A Perfume, again is Ambroxan. But I feel like they probably just amped it up, they put more of it in here or something because it just smells a lot richer. Like, there's really no difference to Not A Perfume and this perfume other than the fact that it literally smells like you just doubled up on that note. Like, it just smells like the exact same scent but stronger. So there's not really much more than that that I can say about this. It's still like that fresh, kind of ambery, a little bit musky but in the best way possible. It's not like musk invisible or that white musk like sweat type of scent. This is cleaner it kind of has like a masculine note and again it reminds me of chloe nomad i love chloe nomad if you guys saw my fiance rates my perfumes video my fiance literally loved chloe nomad um my entire family loved chloe nomad so it's a really really good sexy feminine scent that just kind of smells like you but 20 times better this is just for those of you that have tried the original not a perfume and you don't find it strong enough for you get Superdose because it's exactly what it sounds like. It's honestly so hard to explain 
not a perfume to anybody that has never smelled not a perfume because like how can you explain a scent that smells different on it everybody there's just no way to explain it it's just like the generic way of explaining it is clean laundry like fresh like but i feel like that just makes it sound so generic and boring and you guys all know i hate clean laundry scents but i promise you just you need to smell it for yourself that's all i can say all right then we get to another one that i don't love and this is lady vengeance coming from a name like this i was expecting a lot more i was expecting something way more sexy way darker just dangerous i don't know and that's not what this scent is giving me like at all there's a ton of rose in here there's a ton of patchouli it's like a rose patchouli smell it reminds me a lot of narciso rodrigo for her this perfume right here which was also included in my most hated perfumes video so clearly you know how i'm about to feel about this scent I do not want to spray it on me. I'm going to spray it very far from me because it's a strong scent. It projects a lot just like Narciso Rodriguez for her. I feel like this smells a little bit better. Like I can almost stomach this one a lot more. It's not, I mean, it's still very rosy, very patchouli. It is very feminine, but again, this, this type of rose and patchouli combination just gives me church vibes it gives me grandma vibes it's just a way too mature type of scent for me there is top notes of lavender in here and bergamot there's middle notes of bulgarian rose moroccan rose patchouli isoe super geranium and base notes of white musk and broxen and vanilla it's just not giving me lady vengeance like that name makes me feel like you know this would be like deep dark dangerous sexy amazing but it's not it's just like soft feminine and boring not in love with this one definitely would not even consider buying the full size just because it's way too rosy and way too patchouli so i mean if you do like that combination if you do like narciso rodriguez for her which i know a lot of people do a lot of people compliment this scent a lot but i just never happen to like it this is another one that i'm highly considering getting the full size of i feel like after i buy lipstick fever this will be my next one i feel like i'm probably gonna ask for this for christmas because i'm in love with this scent this is mm, that's literally the name it's just called mm. when you smell this you just want to go Mm, like it literally smells so good this is giving me dior hypnotic poison very similar to that but it's it has almost like this hint of like this freshness to it i feel like another really inexpensive alternative for this one is zara femme it smells very much similar to this and zara femme in comparison to hypnotic poison is kind of like a little bit fresher a little bit lighter not so like down your throat hypnotic poison is She's hypnotic, but that's because she will literally take you out. Like, she is strong, insanely strong. That fragrance will last on your skin, on your clothes, on your hair, everything for literally probably five years if you didn't shower. Like, I swear it is such a strong scent. It's not for everybody, but it's such a seductive and sensual winter scent. But anyways, this video is not about that scent. And a lot of people also say that it smells like Play-Doh. This one is kind of minus that play-doh i really don't know how to describe it it's very sweet this and lipstick fever are the sweetest of this entire collection so for all of you sweet lovers these would be the two that you would be focusing on more i think it's so pretty very very sexy very feminine amazing notes in here there's top notes of raspberry geranium and neroli there's middle notes of tuberose iris orange blossom and jasmine sandback and base notes of vanilla caramel sandalwood heliotrope white musk and patchouli so as you can tell this perfume has probably the most sweet notes in it so it's really just a sweet fragrance like i mean you have raspberry you have vanilla caramel you have some florals in here it's like a good balance i would say so it's not as vanilla heavy and super super sweet like dior hypnotic poison but i feel like it's just like a step down from hypnotic poison it's still strong though i still find this to have really good projection and longevity it's very like fluffy it almost kind of smells like marshmallows or something very very sweet but again there is like this hint of freshness in here you're not going to completely drown in sweetness with this scent as you probably would with hypnotic poison even though i love hypnotic poison it's like one of my favorites like such a seductive scent but 
this is just better almost. Like, I almost prefer this to Hypnotic Poison. And I freaking love Hypnotic Poison. Like, I'm looking at it over there and I feel like it's like eyeing me right now. Like, what are you saying about me? Like, do you want to square up? There's patchouli in here, but there's no patchouli in here. At least that I can smell. So sexy, so feminine, sugary, sweet, fluffy, marshmallow-like, but with so much sexiness to it. Like, it's not just like your generic, sweet, boring perfume. It definitely smells of niche quality. So that is mm. Now the very last perfume that I'm going to be reviewing in this video is actually one that I don't have with me right now and I can't actually smell right now but I literally just smelled it like two hours ago. I was just at Sephora so it's like freshly in my mind. This perfume is Moscow Mule. So Moscow Mule is an alcoholic drink. Sometimes my fiance will order a Moscow Mule so I'm like very familiar with the scent of an actual moscow mule like the drink and it literally smells like moscow mule like if you are familiar with moscow mules like that's what moscow mule smells like it's like the name is so perfect and fitting to it because it has like that spicy fresh kind of citrus like bright a little tart but almost like peppery and that's because it has ginger in it there's top notes of bergamot lime and lemon in this so clearly it opens up very very bright and zesty and just citrus then you have middle notes of hedion hedion i do not know that's the first time i'm seeing this no ginger and apple and base notes of white musk woody notes amber wood and embret it's kind of like a bubbly kind of boozy uh spicy citrus type of scent so I'm not purchasing it just because that's not really the type of scents that I go for. I don't really like like overly citrus, fresh kind of fragrances. I don't like tart fragrances. That's just not really normally what I go for. It does kind of smell like the original Nada perfume in a way. It's a lot more complex though. And like I said, it's just more citrusy, more spicy, and just a lot more to it. But it does have like a hint of that fragrance in here. But I would definitely go for that one as opposed to this one when it comes to like my scent preferences. Yeah, that is Moscow Mule. Literally, if you have ever smelled or tasted a Moscow Mule in your life, that perfume pretty much smells like if you were to smell an actual Moscow Mule. A Moscow Mule is literally made with, I think, vodka. There's ginger in there, there's some lime. So it's literally this perfume. Like the composition of an actual drink Moscow Mule is like almost the exact same as this perfume. So that concludes this video. Let me know if you guys want me to do more of these types of videos where I just kind of focus on one house and I review a bunch from the house. I feel like the only way that I can really do that is if I could find a discovery set in a bunch of different houses because I'm obviously like a lot of houses have like hundreds of perfumes in them so I'm not gonna like go and buy hundreds of perfumes. Um, so I feel like the best way to go about doing that is probably with like a discovery set. So let me know if you guys want me to do any other houses review like a whole range. And please let me know if they have like a little discovery set that I can review because I'm not about to buy 200 perfumes to review from a house. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you learned something new. I definitely did. This was a really, really interesting video and these perfumes are so interesting and I literally discovered some of my favorite perfumes from this house. I'm really, really excited that I discovered this house. If you guys have any of the perfumes in this line, let me know which one is your favorite. Let me know if any of the ones that I didn't really cover in this video are your favorites because I might look into those. But that is it for me today. Please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and turn your post notifications on and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!